Hey there students and welcome to part two of the Integrated Algebra Radiance exam for January 2013. In this installment, we're going to be going over questions six to uh, ten. All right, so uh, this, a copy of this document can be found on mat.serve.com. Um, just go to the um, New York Regents link and then uh, you can download this document. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at question six. All right, so question six uh, says the expression 100 n squared minus one is equivalent to. So this is a difference of squares um, example. It's testing of your uh, ability to factor a difference of squares. Okay, how do I know it's a difference of squares? 100 is a square, n squared is a square, and one also is a square. So the difference of squares formula is given by a square minus b square equals a plus b times a minus b, okay? So how do you factor a difference of squares? All you simply do is you take the square root of the first term and the last term, and then you add and subtract your square roots. Okay, so the plus or minus uh, the square root of the first and the last term, and then you get uh, the factored form. All right, so let's apply this uh, uh, approach to this example. We have this problem we have right here, number six, 100 n squared minus one. So what we'll do is we'll take the square root of the first term and the last term and then we're going to add and subtract we're going to have write the sum and the difference of the square roots okay all right the square root of 100 n square we're going to square root 10 uh, 100 which is 10 and the square root of n square is n okay so 10 n let's do the plus first plus one because the square root of one is one and then the difference of the square roots is going to be 10 n minus one all right, so our answer is clearly option one. All right, let's uh, move along to number seven. It says in, tri in the right triangle ABC shown below, what is the value of cosine A? Uh, this is testing our ability to construct ratios using um, right triangle trigonometric rules, okay? So um, in right triangle trig, there is a formula that helps us find um, sine, cosine, and tangent, and that is known as Sokatoa. You might have heard of that before. So, Katoa, uh, so sine is basically um, opposite of a hypotenuse, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, and then tan is opposite of adjacent. So, sine, cosine, and tangent. All right, in order to use Sokatoa, you must have a reference angle, all right? What is your reference angle in this case? It's angle A, as indicated here. So, let's mark angle A. So, this will be the basis of our labeling, okay? So, this is angle A. That means that the side, the side that's opposite that angle, guess what? It's going to be called the opposite. Okay, so this is the opposite for O. So O is going to be 12. And the 90 degree angle always points to the hypotenuse. Okay, that's the biggest angle in the triangle. And um, the biggest angle in the triangle is always opposite the longest side. So the 90 degree always points to the hypotenuse. Okay, so our H is going to be 20 in this problem. And then the other side is our adjacent. Okay, all right, so we're looking for cosine, cosine A. So which of these am I going to use? I'm going to use this piece right here. Um, I'm going to use uh, the cap component of Sokatoa. What does cat tell me? Cat tells me that the cosine is equal to adjacent of a hypotenuse, okay? So cosine uh, A is going to be adjacent divided by the hypotenuse. Adjacent is 16, as you can see here. Uh, this is the adjacent, and then the hypotenuse is 20, okay? So adjacent of a hypotenuse is going to be 16 over 20. All right, so our answer is option number two. All right, let's move along to question eight. It says a bag contains five green gumdrops and six red gumdrops. If Kim pulls a green gumdrop out of the bag and eats it, what is the probability that the next gumdrop she pulls out will be red? All right, so um, so let's uh, sketch, just make a diagram, sketch the situation. So we have five green, green uh, gumdrops, so one, two, uh, three, four, five, and then we have six red ones. One, two, three, one, two, three. It's always good to have a visual so you can understand what's going on. So what happened is that um, 
Kim pulled out a gumdrop from the bag and it happened to be a green one and she eats it. So what does that mean? Well, that means that one of those gumdrops is gone. All right, so this is all we have left. We are left with, um, what we're left with is uh, four green gumdrops and six red gumdrops. Okay, so the question is, what is the probability that the next gumdrop she pulls out will be red? Okay, so probability of getting a red gumdrop is basically uh, um, the possible outcomes, possible successful outcomes over the total. Okay, so how, how many uh, possible successful outcomes can you have? How many reds are there? You're successful when you pick a red, right? How many ways can you pick a red? One, two, three, four, five, six. So possible outcomes is six divided by the total. The total has been reduced. Before the total was 11, but um, you pulled one out. So it has dropped to uh, 10. So counting one, two, three, four, four greens and six reds still remain intact. So six over 10. Okay, so this is a, a probability that she will pick one red after a green has been and taken out of the whole collection. All right, so our answer is clearly um, option number four. All right, let's advance to the next problem. All right, so we're given four graphs here, and we ask uh, which of them represents a function. So for this one, we're going to apply something called the vertical line test. Okay, you want to test if a function is, if a graph is the graph of a function, you're going to apply the vertical line test. Okay, so what is the vertical line test? The vertical line test um, basically requires that the vertical line must intersect the graph of a function no more than once. Okay, so maximum of one intersection the graph of all functions you can intersect no more than once okay so all you just simply do you can use your pen or your pencil um, I'm gonna have a line right here that I'm gonna use and uh, what you do is basically you will run the line through the entire domain of the function from left to right you can guess what's gonna happen at the end so you don't need to bother yourself with that so just focus on what you have in the graph if it intersects more than once um, at any point in the graph, then that graph is not the graph of a function. All right, so let's keep that point in mind. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, carry out the test. Um, so these are my vertical lines that I'm going to be using to test my functions. So let's grab the first one. Now you check this out. I'm going to sweep this uh, vertical line across the entire graph. If it intersects more than once at any point on the graph, then it, fail, it has failed the vertical line test and the graph is not the graph of a function, okay? So, bam. See what happens? It has already failed the test because this vertical line has intersected this graph once, twice. The two points, that's too much. You cannot intersect more than once, okay? Maximum of one intersection. What did I put that one? Anyway, maximum of one intersection, okay? All right, now let's take a look at uh, graph number uh, two. Okay, we have a vertical line. So we're going to grab a vertical line. Okay, what's going on here? How many intersections do we have? So these two lines are collinear. Guess what? They intersect an infinite number of times. Pick any x and any um, any x value. It's an intersection with the vertical line, okay? So this one intersects an infinite number of lines. It intersects here, here, any point at all, okay? It intersects forever. Way too many. We need only one point of intersection, okay? So one clearly fails the vertical line test, and, um, and two also clearly fails the vertical line test, okay? So we have two failures here. All right, so we're going to move on to the next question, I mean the next option. All right, so for option three, we're going to do the same process. You see, one intersection, one intersection, look at that. For the entire domain, this graph is going to be intersecting at exactly one point, no more than one point, um, at every point in the domain of this function, okay? So you can clearly see that uh, uh, graph number three qualifies as a function. So this is our answer right here, okay? If you take a look at option number four, uh, we clearly see that it fails the vertical line test because if I put a line right here, 
what happens you notice that it intersects at more than one point it intersects at exactly two points so this intersection this intersection is too much so this is not a function all right so remember the graph of a function requires that a vertical line must intersect the graph at exactly one point at every point in the domain all right so that's that okay now let's move on to question number 10. it says the current population of a town is 10,000. if the population increases by 20 percent each year which equation could be used to find the population after t years all right so um to compute this to write an expression that represents the population after um after t years we need to remember our population growth formula okay um for this is going to be a discrete growth situation so we're going to be using the formula p equals the initial population p sub zero times one plus the growth the growth rate the discrete growth rate raised to the t okay this is the model for discrete growth rate for right? each year it goes at a certain rate there's also another formula p is equal to p sub zero e to the rt uh this is mo uh, more has to do with exponential uh i mean continuous growth but this is the one we're going to be using um in this problem okay all right so now all we need to do is find p sub zero r and r and then plug it in okay okay so p sub zero is the initial population initial population all right and then um r is the growth rate in decimal form growth rate you know it must be in decimal form okay in decimal form and then uh t is the time all right and then p uh is the final population all right, so this uh, this basically uh, tells you what each variable means in the model that we're using right here. So let's go ahead and fill them in. The initial population P sub zero is 10,000. The growth rate R is 10, 20%, 20 over 100. In decimal form, uh, we just moved the decimal point. We need this 100 gun, right? So how do I change this 100 into a one? You have a decimal point here, a decimal point here. You move it forward twice, one, two. That makes it 101. So since you move the decimal point forward twice in the bottom, do the same at the top, one, two. So 20% is the same thing as two over 100, 20 over 100, the same thing as 0.2, okay? All right, and then we don't know how, how long this growth is gonna take place. So T is equal to T. So if we plug it into the formula, the formula P equals P sub zero times one plus R to the T. We're going to have uh, P equals 10,000 times one plus R is 0.2 to the T. Okay, let's just simplify this quantity in this parenthesis one more time. So we have 10,000 times one plus two to the t and that's what p is okay so our answer is going to be option number three and there you have it so thanks so much for taking the time to watch this presentation you can feel free to subscribe to my channel by clicking up here um, and please post a comment to let me know what you think about this clip more videos uh, uh including the other installments of this clip can be found on mat.serve.com thanks again and have a wonderful day